Aloha, it is day 21 of the Eat Local Maui Challenge with Project Locavore, and I'm eating 100% foods that are grown, raised, foraged here in the Hawaiian Islands. And I am standing next to this crazy, super invasive plant called False Ava Oja Santa, from where it originates from, Piper Auretum is its scientific name. And this is actually a very delicious plant. Um, you know, Oja Santa means sacred leaf. So it's certainly an appreciated and well-loved plant from where it originates in the Yucatan. Um, what I'm harvesting are the flowers and the leaves. Um, but mostly the flowers are the coveted thing. They're actually called an inflorescence and all those tiny little things. There's lots and lots and lots of flowers. Um, this really smells like root beer. It's divine. And so here I just wanted to point out like this one is past its prime and is no good. It's kind of already pollinated. Um, but these ones that typically hang underneath and are still really uh, white and tight <laughs> um, are, are so good. And yeah, the leaves are also great to harvest. I've made them into green mole before and uh, used them to wrap foods and steam things. So um, yeah, it uh, can be hard to differentiate from you know, the true ava, and you can look at some of the veination in the leaves, but really it's that smell that is just undeniable. There's a lot of wild yeast, so if you're into fermentation and making your own, like, sodas, uh, you can do that with these flowers. Both the leaves and the flowers can be dried, and the flavor really maintains itself, so... Yeah, this is really a great one that we need to work on eating more of because it is crazy invasive. And here we have our yellow butterfly ginger, Hibicium flavescence, going off here on the road to Hana. We eat the flower buds, pulling these out. And you can eat the unopened flower buds on this species is really quite delicious as well. We can also use the rhizomes. Thank you, plant. We have this costus plant, and these little flowers that come out the side, and they never really get much bigger than that. They open up a little bit more. These are delicious if you just pull them out. Really yum. Um, here you've got a bunch of honohono grass, which I love eating. I'll typically pull out this top one to two leaves, um, but uh, you can eat, you know, a lot of it, but you have to chop it up finely. Lots of hono hono. Mmm, and this costas. Got a little road food here, some Lao Lao from out in Kenai that is 100% local with a little bit of the crumbles from the um, bele chips that I made yesterday and some wild foraged costa flowers on top. I have a plant that's common name is called Coster's Curse and this bug is super invasive. Crazy kind and we can eat those little berries here. So you can see as far as the scale with my finger, they're not very large and they're hairy. Yes, the texture is not like super ideal, but they're edible and they're here. And yeah, we can stop the spread of the seed by eating them for sure. Okay, so I wanted to share this crazy invasive. I mean, windward sides, uh, it's called inkberry, um, uh, Ardesia elliptica, and you're really gonna wanna wait and only eat berries that are ripened to that fully uh, black purple. 
Uh, but these are so abundant and you know, the flavor might not be just like absolutely delicious, but once you juice them, um, I like to use the same juicing method that I use for java plums, which is I just bring the water to a boil and then I use like a nut milk bag or cheesecloth or old clean t-shirt to, you know, squeeze out all the pulp and seeds and then have that juice. But I mean, these, you can add so many different things to flavor them. And so the nutritional quality is just off the charts. Um, so super abundant, wild food, super invasive. The more that we can start eating this one, um, and stopping you know further seed dispersal is just amazing you can see they just it's like a wall of these all along the sides of the roads All right, we've got another great wild edible, and it's not uh, classified as an invasive, but it certainly is a super abundant plant called how, that's H-A-U, and it's a hibiscus family, and we can eat the yellow flowers there. They're really delicious. I like eating them raw as well as cooked in soups and tempura and the thing things like that. Um, these are the ones that turn kind of that burnt orange reddish color by the end of the day or uh, by the following day. So they have this really interesting life cycle and have so much to teach us. It's, it's definitely a medicine plant. So again, really being respectful of asking permission of the plant, asking permission of any landowners, and uh, just really honoring these wild spaces that we get to tend and love up on. All right, so I made it home and I just wanted to share with you how I'm using these abundant species, also known as invasive species, in my kitchen and what I'm doing with them. So for the false ava flowers or inflorescences is the botanical terminology, um, I took them and it's really great to use mason jars. Um, I mean, these are the coveted, you know, half gallon mason jars. So you have a line and I put one cup of a liquid honey in there and then five cups of water um, and shook it all up and then added roughly two cups of the false ava flowers. And I am going to stir that two to three times a day and you know, stir it for one to two minutes, you know, really stir it up. And then once it starts forming bubbles and that can take anywhere from three to seven days, oftentimes the ferments with honey will take a touch longer. Um, I will go ahead and put it in a swing top bottle and, oops, this one, <laughs> and refrigerate it and then do what's called burping occasionally depending on the amount of fizz that uh, was generated in the fermentation. So I personally love bubbly fizzy drinks and it's been something I've really been missing on the, the Eat Local Maui challenge. Um, I've realized how much I rely on making syrups out of wild fruits, but then adding like the can of bubble water. And so um, I certainly have done fermenting in the past and just, you know, like, oh, <laughs> I need to be doing more of that again. So doing this, and then I also put all of the yellow butterfly ginger flowers into some coconut uh, milk that I had made. And you'll notice the little chunkies. That's because I froze this coconut milk. And what I've found is it has, it gets kind of more of that, um, that texture to it, but it's such a, a great method because coconut milk goes off within like two days in the fridge and it's already pow. So I like freezing it and then actually when you thaw it, you get even more separation of the coconut cream on top. So if you're trying to get that coconut cream, um, in my experience, the freezing method is great. So anyways, I have this cocoa milk and I added the, uh, you can see I'm kind of floating in there. I added the yellow butterfly ginger flowers and I can use this cream in all kinds of different ways. Um, so I'm just going to let that soak and infuse refrigerated for another day or two. So 
All right, uh, next I'm gonna process up all of those beautiful ink berries. So this is when you turn on a good movie and you pluck all this, these off of the stem. All right, so I'm gonna give these a wash and then just cover with water, bring to just a boil, and then uh, squeeze it out with a nut milk bag. All right, there's all the juice from the from the ink berry. It's beautiful. It doesn't have much flavor. It has some sediment in it. I'll be mixing it with other things for sure. And while I was watching movies, I also processed up all kinds of tamarind that I found forage today, as well as some Bixa Orellana, known as a chayote lipstick plant. And yes, a forager's work is never done. And that's a wrap on day 21.